Hello and welcome to the ADP eTime basic user tutorial for web clocking employees. In this tutorial, we'll cover logging into the system, clocking in and out, and submitting PTO requests. Let's get started. To log in to ADP eTime, you'll need to go through the main ADP portal. In the Oscillero desktop, you can click the eTime link from the menu at the left, or you can go directly to the ADP portal at portal.adp.com and click on User Login. Here you should be able to log in with the credentials that you got when you first registered for ADP iPay. If you're not sure if you're registered, or if you're not sure if, that you have the right credentials on hand, you can click on Forgot Your User ID or Forgot Your Password at the links at the bottom of the screen. Or you can contact your local payroll administrator and they should be able to look this up for you. Once you're in the ADP portal, you'll see a home screen that looks something like this. You can click on the Enterprise eTime Gateway link in the Welcome text box. If you're a web clocker, then you will normally want to use the HTML version, which loads a little bit faster. This should take you directly into the eTime system. Once you're in the eTime system, you'll have a very clear option to clock in and clock out. Just hit record timestamp, and that's all you need to do. You can then log out using the option at the top right hand corner of the screen. If you'd like to see some of your own personal time card information or request time off, you can do so by selecting the Home option at the top right hand corner of the screen below the Log Off option. You'll be brought to a screen that looks like this, with a few options where you can see your time card, some reports relating to your information, or your requests. You can click on My Requests in order to request time off. You'll be taken to a calendar format screen with its current schedule information that's visible. You should pay attention to the time period drop-down that we'll see in a moment. Use this drop-down to find the right time period. Here you can see the time period drop-down up top. You'll want to select the, the time period that you'd like to see that's relevant to the time that you're taking off. So if you're taking time off in the current pay period or in the current month, you'll probably see the relevant date already displayed, in which case you don't have to do anything. If you're requesting time off in the following month, or maybe a few months down the line, you'll want to just make sure that the range of dates that's reflected up top includes the date that you're asking for time off. Once you've selected that date or range of dates, you can choose your request option below at the bottom of the screen. All employees who do not typically get paid on a full eight hour basis every day should use the specify time off option. This is important because if you are a six, six and a half, seven or seven and a half hour employee and you request eight hours time off, then the system will automatically deduct eight hours PTO from your schedule until you or your manager are able to get it corrected. This is important to just make sure that you don't over deduct PTO from your schedule. Once you're in the specified time off frame, you have a pretty self-explanatory set of options. You'll have the start date, which is the date that you'll want to take PTO on. So you'll select a date there. You'll select a start time for the PTO that you're taking. If you're requesting a full day, this would just be the time that you typically come in according to your schedule. If you're requesting part of a day, say you're leaving at 1 o'clock p.m., you would just want to put the time that you are leaving into that box. And then the duration is always measured in hours. So say you're taking a full day and you're a seven and a half hour employee, you will put seven and a half in that box. If you are requesting a partial day, say you're requesting four hours, you would just put four in that box. Then you can write a note to your supervisor so they know why you're taking time off if you'd like and click submit. Clicking submit will send your request to your manager. They'll receive an email and they'll receive a note in their eTime message box. And that's it. If you have further questions on how to use the eTime system, you can contact your program local payroll administrator. And thank you very much for watching this webinar.